Oh. Genius Insomniac is Bruce, the coolest nerd you know. Okay, today we're gonna revisit the a guy walks in the store and steals a $100 bill. Look, I love the healthy debate. I love the fact that people are uh, checking the video out and having this healthy debate in the comments. Um, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, but check this out, I'm gonna show you a different way to see that it's $100. Okay, so check it out. So in the original video about the question, the question was this. This. So, a guy walks into a store and steals a $100 bill from the register without the owner's knowledge. He comes back five minutes later, buys $70 worth of goods with the $100 bill. The owner gives him $30 in change. How much money did the owner lose? Going back, okay, I showed originally that there was $500 in cash, $500 in goods. Let's, let's approach this differently. Let's look at the $500. Okay, so let's, we're gonna do this a different way as well. Because I think a lot of the confusion is coming in is where I I try to explain the relationship of the money being lost with the owner and the robber. And I'm just gonna show you where it's still the same loss no matter what the robber does. Now, the $30 in cash, $70 in goods, I will admit, it's actually an oversight on my part and not explaining that that is actually what the robber made out with, but it's still a $100 loss to the owner. And let me clarify that. Let me clarify why it's a $100 loss directly to the owner. Okay, it's very, very simple and we'll jump straight to it. So let's start with the $500 in the register. The robber comes in and takes $100 bill out of the register, gone. So it's $400 in that register. Now here's where it gets really fun. Let's say the robber never comes back in again, ever goes out, goes into a black hole. And by the way, I have video explaining what black holes are, but check this out. So he goes into a black hole. The next guy comes in the store, buys $70 worth of goods with the $100 bill, and we give him $30 and change back. Our register looks exactly the same as the end of the last video. It's $470 in the register now, and our goods go down $70 because we have the money for that. So, so what I'm showing you here is after the robber initially steals the $100, it's actually of no consequence to what he does afterwards. Him coming back in and making the $70 purchase and we giving him $30 back in change, he takes $70 in goods. It was, I was trying to show the relationship between this guy and the owner, and I probably should have clarified better that that's actually showing what the robber made out of at the end of all these transactions. Well, we could have just stopped right there because as you see with someone else walking in, it's still the register is gonna show the same loss. And the reason why it shows a loss and the owner doesn't show a $30 loss is because of this. When the owner makes the transaction, there should be $500 in the register at the time of the transaction. When he got $100 for the goods, it should be $600. When he gives $30 in change, it should be $570. So. When he counts his money and says, wait, I have $470, then he knows, wait a minute, I had $500, I made a $70 sale. That $70 sale should be reflected in the drawer. It's not, he has $470. Notice how we're not even showing the goods here because we're just trying to show the cash flow, the cash flow to the owner himself. And no matter what, even though he ended with $470 at the end of the day, it's not as though he gave away $30 to get there he was still robbed of $100. The robber could never come back in. The next sale is still gonna produce the same results at the register itself. At the end of the day, the owner still lost $100. The robber coming back in to spend the $100 in the store, he, he was only exchanging the $100 for $70 in goods and $30 in cash. The owner still lost $100. Because at the end of the day, the expected profit was missing. So remember, if you started with 500 bucks, he knows that he doesn't know $100 was stolen. If he started with $500, he made a $70 sale. He expects to see $570 in his register. Instead, he sees 470. So to him, what is he gonna do? He's not gonna look for $30 missing because he knows he made a $70 sale. He's gonna say, hey, there should be another $100 somewhere. Did I drop it on the floor? Is it underneath the register? He's gonna be missing $100 and he's gonna look for $100. He's not gonna look for $30. So maybe it would have been best for me to leave that part off the video and just show you that once that money was stolen, the money was stolen, it was gone. Whether he used it in the store, or if he used it at Pizza Hut up the street, that $100 is missing from the register. No matter the future transactions, the register will be $100 short at the end of the day. So going back to my original video, the owner lost $100. The sale afterwards is inconsequential to 
the actual loss of $100 before the sale because the robber could have come back and spent that money or he could have left and someone else could have came in and spent that money. End of the day, the register is still short, owner still lost $100, period. So once again, if you like any of all this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Follow me at Tweet Insomniac on Twitter and Snapchat BZ Bets. Continue the debates, it's great, but as always, Bruce, coolest nerd you know.